Hello and welcome to On the Sunny Side. I'm Sunny Grenneveld, I'm an entrepreneur, and here every week on F15, I interview people who are shaping the digital economy and who use tech for good. Today with me is Chris Grossman. He's the founder and CEO of Beekeeper. Chris, welcome to On the Sunny Side. Thank you very much, Sunny. It's a great pleasure to be here with you today. Excellent. So I start every time with uh, five quick questions. First one, are you a morning or a night person? I'm 100% a morning person. I like to also go sleep early. So 10.30, I'm already in bed. <laughs> wow. Uh, if I gave you a time machine, uh, you could go any place, anywhere. Where would you go? I'm super curious about how the future looks like. So I would definitely jump into it to go like a hundred years from now, from now to see how it looks like. But of course the past is also intriguing. So maybe taking a look at how Romans or Greeks or Aztecs used to live would also be really cool. So you'd be a real time hopper. Um, yes. Hopping back to the present, what is a question that is right now top of mind for you? I would say a big question for me is how the world will look like after this pandemic is over. So will it go back to some sort of normal? How will that look like? What are we going to retain from what we learned uh, during this time? So I think th those questions. And what is success to you? For me, success means touching the lives of people in a meaningful way that you can actually change them that is success for me and of course doesn't have to be a, a big mass but it's more about quality and, and impact i would say now you um you found a beekeeper it's a name that allows for all kinds of interpretations for those who don't know what beekeeper is what do you do Yes, in very simple terms, we are a mobile collaboration platform fully dedicated for frontline workers. So if there's one thing to remember about Beekeeper, it's about frontlines. And we help them basically go through their day and do their work in a more digital manner. Nowadays, they typically live off paper, bulletin board, paper list, checklists. And we digitalize all of that and put it into a very simple mobile app for them. You also recently wrote a book, The Rise of the Frontline Worker. What is that about and, and uh, why did you write the book? Yes, for sure. So I'll, I'll start with the why. And I think it's really this tribute to the frontline that we have been serving at Beekeeper for the past seven years. That I think if there's one thing coming out of this pandemic is how much attention and how much awareness uh, throughout the whole world came around the frontline workers, right? I mean, they are basically the fabric of our society, the essential workers, and the ones that really kept everything going while the rest of the world stopped, right? And I think during this pandemic, it became more and more evident the very rudimentary conditions in which they work and how those became basically the weak points of the whole system with which in this pandemic with a lot of pressure were basically many of the failure points that we saw, right? So I think the the notion that it's important to invest in digitalizing in bringing up to the 21st century how the work gets done in the front line is very important and that's what the book is about so it reveals with data with insights with very practicable uh, advice what a business leader leading a company with many frontline workers needs to be thinking about in terms of navigating uh, this digitalization of the front line when you started Beekeeper, which I believe was somewhere around 2012, 2013, um, you started out as you know a small company. Now you're, I believe, in, in three or four continents. Uh, you have raised over 80 million. You are one of Switzerland's, or perhaps one of the leading uh, software as a service company uh, in Switzerland that is, you know, that has really managed to go from zero to 100 and accelerate uh, incredibly. And that was pre-COVID. Uh, now, uh, post-COVID, I'd imagine, as you said, the frontline workers have become so much more important. How did it specifically affect you as a digital business? Thank you very much for, for the kind words, <laughs> Sunny. But yes, it was definitely a, a moment for all of us to, to step up because we realized and were humbled by 
how much responsibility was in our hands to support our customers through this pandemic. So we saw a number of uh, effects happening. The first one was, of course, many of the industries that we work with were hit very badly by COVID. So it was more about uh, how do we support them throughout this pandemic if they suddenly have to furlough all of their employees. And that's actually the, the worst point in time to go dark and to just completely lose contact with your frontline, right? So how do we support those customers that are in a very difficult situation economically also where they saw their revenues evaporate 80, 90% as in the, in the travel industry? how to support them when they most need you and they're in the most difficult position. So that, I would say that was one part where our teams did an amazing job in, in really navigating that, that through and always staying uh, very close to our customers to help them through this pandemic. And at the same time, we saw other industries that picked up an amazing acceleration that they needed to bring in this type of technology even quicker than what they would have thought. So everything that is essential retail, food manufacturing, logistics, those that really had to continue operating and with even more pressure than before, right? So we had these two situations where on one of them was more of a, a support and damage contention and trying to help our existing customers. And on the other hand, deal with a lot of new customers that came on board a, really in the need of this type of technology. And they wanted to have it by yesterday, right? Uh, so, so that was, I would say, the, the very particular situation that we were in and where the team did an amazing job stepping up to, to that challenge. Was there any specific story from one of your customers that, that stuck with you through, through this period where, where you know, your software really made a difference? Anything come to mind there in terms of, of anecdote that touched you? Yes, for sure. I mean... We actually had last week our, our event about the frontline. It was called Frontline Future. And many of our customers shared their stories about navigating the pandemic with Beekeeper and the type of things that they saw. So we had, for example, Kenus is one of our uh, customers. They're a, probably the biggest food manufacturing company in Germany. Unfortunately, they were very, very impacted by COVID. They had an outbreak in one of their production plants in Germany. And they basically had their frontline quarantine for anywhere between four to eight weeks. So the whole, uh, like every single frontline worker was at home during that time. And the, the words from the leadership team was, we couldn't have operated as a business without this type of tool because we would have been completely in the dark in the sense that they needed to send updates every single day. They needed to collect feedback from the frontline to see how they were doing across the different plans. And without technology nowadays, you would have needed to fall back onto snail mail or sending paper letters, which simply wouldn't have worked, right? So uh, realizing that we were able to support them and keep their business running throughout those uh, times was incredibly humbling for, for us. What is it about frontline workers um, specifically that, you know, I think all of us who sort of work in the digital space um, have a service job, um, don't really think of this being a problem. Uh, we have Slack, we have Teams, we have all kinds of uh, collaboration tools. Um, what is it about frontline workers that's different? Um, and how, do you, how does Beekeeper also fit into this, I would consider fairly competitive landscape uh, of, of collaboration tools? The, the one thing that makes us very different is the strong focus on the frontline, on the frontline worker. And to your question at the beginning, what makes them so different is that it's re developing software for the frontline is a completely different sport than developing software for a desktop employee. And the reason being is that all the rules of those games are very, very different. So you have, for example, unions, you have labor laws, you have another type of relationship between the, the employee and the employer, uh, relationships that might also be historically tainted with some uh, baggage that maybe trust is not as high as it would be with a desktop worker. So there are many landmines, I would say, that needs to be navigated in order to successfully deploy this type of technology. And then maybe the biggest difference is also just the needs of the frontline worker versus a desktop worker and the, I would say, mental 
framework in which they operate from being their job as, hey, I just need to get this done to get my money and I want to get paid and I want to know when I have to work. And that's it. Not much more than that, not much less. But what we strongly believe is that by giving them the right tools and the right environment, there's an incredible amount of potential to be unlocked for the business, but also for the worker to make their life easier and their uh, life much more supported and enabled digitally. And we see these amazing things happening where it's not only the company that benefits massively from it, but also the frontline. And I think uh, this approach taking more of a frontline first approach rather than a company systems first approach is what makes us very different and, uh, and what ends up delivering these results that we're seeing. Now, you've raised over 80 million. I said, you know, you're one of the most successful, if not the most successful um, SaaS company out of Switzerland. What is your vision going forward? Yeah, so I think we're at the very, very initial innings of uh, what we're building. So even though from the outside, and I appreciate and, uh, and, and hear very nicely your words, for us, it feels like we're just getting started in this very big mission to bring technology to 2 billion frontline workers. Because compared to the amount of desktop workers that there are, which are maybe 600 million, for every single person like you and me sitting behind a laptop, there are three more that are frontline workers, right? And as of today in 2021, they still work with pen and paper. They still go through the checklist. They still check their shift on the bulletin board and, and, and. So it's a, it's a very, really the beginning of this uh, journey that we're embarking. Our vision is really to be the collaboration platform for frontline workers. And in the same way as people think today, well, if I need a collaboration tool in the office, it's Office 365 for Microsoft. Beekeeper should be the Microsoft for frontline workers in 10, 20 years from now. Well, I'm very excited to follow you on that journey. In wrapping up, um, just uh, I always try to tease out one or two recommendations or pieces of advice uh, for the audience. And uh, many times they're, they're entrepreneurs, they're people who would like to start up uh, companies just like you did in 2012, 2013. Um, two things. One, uh, what's a book you recommend and what's a piece of advice you would give to a young entrepreneur? So the book I would recommend, it's one I recently finished. It's called The Obstacle is the Way by Ryan Holiday. And I really like that. It. it resonated very much with, I think, exactly that initial phase naturally every phase of a startup where it's uh, going through those obstacles and making out of them opportunities and learning from them and definitely resonated very much. Yeah. And in terms of advice for a young entrepreneur, I think, uh, yeah, thinking what's the problem that you're solving is definitely one of the biggest learnings from my side uh, not just building a product for the sake of building a product, but what's the pain and what's the problem that you're solving for your customer. I think that has been a, very nice and strong guide for us that has helped us uh, evolve as a company. How, how has it specifically helped you? Because I think that's an, an interesting story um, as someone yeah. who's been following along for, mm -hmm. for uh, quite some years now, pretty much from the beginning. Um, if yes. you could share that, that would be wonderful. We have been going through different stages. The first one was more of an anonymous flirting platform for students. Then we became a community student um, platform. From there, we went more into the internal communication for all employees, reaching also the frontline workers. And now we have been discovering that we can even solve a bigger problem by addressing only the collaboration of the frontline workers, right? So along those ways, as you correctly mentioned, each one of the pains has been bigger. So first it was about finding a partner at university for the students. Then it became more like connecting with a bigger amount of students in your university. It went into actually helping companies reach all of their employees, which is a big pain, especially for very distributed organizations. And last but not least, now we have been realizing the frontline workers need so much this technology that that's the bigger problem that we're solving, right? And I think that's also for young entrepreneurs, a very strong way of looking at what they're solving for their customers and a very good filter to see in which direction they need to be moving. Chris, thank you so much for this very insightful conversation. I'm very excited to see where you take Beekeeper next. 
And uh, yeah, all the best for that for that path, uh, path uh, against obstacles, it seems, but uh, mm -hmm. one that's certainly been very successful so far. Thank you so much, Sonny, for having me. It was great he being here with you and see you next time. Here on the sunny side, we continue every week with a new episode interviewing someone who's shaping the digital economy and using tech for good. If you would like to be uh, notified when we have the next one, do click on the subscribe button. If you have any ideas or comments, please uh, just drop them here below the video. And I hope to see you very soon back here on the sunny side.